Hey everybody, this is Ty from the YouTube channel The Mountain Life. If you've been following my channel, you've seen that I've posted a few videos about fishing for kokanee salmon. I get a lot of questions on those videos, so I wanted to go over some of the gear that I use and teach you guys how to use some of these things. Really, it's going to be a series of videos. In this first video, I'm going to teach you how to fish for kokanee salmon without the use of downriggers. Some of us can't afford downriggers or we just don't have them yet. Um, I started off fishing for kokanee this way and so I want to show you a few of the tools that I used and um, hopefully you can learn a few things that will help you catch more kokanee salmon or you can apply these tactics to just trolling in general if you don't have a downrigger. Okay so the first tool I'm going to teach you how to use is this jet diver. These are made um, in a few different sizes. I believe this is the biggest size. This is called the Jumbo Jet and it's advertised to dive to depths of 50 feet depending on how much line you have out. But when you buy it in the store you can get it in a few different colors and it's going to come with this small piece of monofilament which is pretty robust and it's attached to this crane swivel or barrel swivel at the other end. So I'm going to teach you guys how to rig one of these. So first let's decide what we want to fish with. We're probably going to fish with some kind of dodger and for this application I'm just going to pull off a matching squid here. So this is what your kokanee salmon setup would normally look like. You'd be fishing with a dodger probably, something like this and you'd have the other end attached to a squid or a spinner or some other kokanee lure of choice and you would normally tie your fishing line into this end of the dodger, your fishing line coming from your rod. However, we're going to try to accommodate this jet diver here. So what I've done is I've taken a, about a four foot piece of monofilament and I'm going to tie that piece of monofilament into this end of a dodger Tied this four foot piece of monofilament into the front end of my dodger and now I'm going to take the other end of that monofilament and I'm going to tie that into a swivel. Now that you have that four foot piece of monofilament tied one end to the front of your dodger, the other end to the swivel, you're going to take the line from your fishing rod and what you're going to do is you're going to thread that line from your fishing rod through the swivel that came attached to your jet diver. So you thread that through and then the next step is to take a bead and thread that on the line and then tie this into the other side of the swivel. So again, let's just review what we've done. We've attached our lure to the back side of this dodger. Here's our lure. We've tied a four foot piece of monofilament, one end to the front of the dodger here. The other end is attached to this swivel right here. Then we took the line from our fishing rod and we threaded it through this big silver swivel that's attached to our jet diver. We then threaded a bead on and then we tied the other end to our swivel. So what that swivel will do for us is it will keep that jet diver from sliding down and getting tangled up with our dodger and our lure because that bead will slide back and it will run into that swivel and if our bead is large enough then the eyelet of this swivel that comes with your jet diver can't pass over that bead. So you can see that jet diver will slide down the line until it runs into that swivel that we tied in and that serves to keep our jet diver away from our dodger and away from our lure so that it's not getting tangled up. So to give you a visual representation of what we just did, we took our line coming from the boat, we first passed it through the swivel that comes with your jet diver. We then place that line through a bead and then we tied that line into one end of a swivel. Then we tied in the other end of the swivel a four foot piece of fishing line 
and that attached to our lure. And in our case, we attached it to a dodger first, and then our lure behind that. So that jet diver will slide down our line and get stuck here, so that it's not getting tangled up in our dodger and our lure. And I have to be honest, the first time that I used this, I thought I was gonna end up with a tangled mess. However, it actually worked out really well, and it never once got tangled up on me. One last thing that I'll mention about this size of jet diver is it's got three different holes here. You can take this clip out and you can attach it in any one of those three holes and depending on the angle it will change the angle of this jet diver such that it will dive more or less depending on which hole you have this in. So that's one way that you can tailor the depth that you're trying to reach with this device or it's also dependent on how much line you're letting out. So if you have a reel that has a line counter on it, that would be a really good tool to have, but not completely necessary, as I've had good success starting out with something like this. So this is a much smaller version of what I've just shown you. This is also a jet diver. However, with this being much smaller, you're not going to achieve the same depths that you would with the larger version. The nice thing about this though is it's a little easier to set up and use. So the first step in this is to take the line coming from your fishing rod and you tie that directly into the front part of this diver. So there's a, a clip right there. You'll tie your line coming from your fishing rod into that clip. There's a swivel on the bottom of the jet diver here and you'll tie about a four foot piece of monofilament one end into that swivel. The other end of that four foot piece of monofilament will then run back and it will attach into the front end of our dodger. And then as usual, behind our dodger, we'll have our lure here. So again, this is much easier to set up and use. There's a lot less um, hardware. However, you're not gonna dive as deep with this setup and it is effective for catching trout and kokanee salmon. So far our discussion has been limited to jet divers, which work well. Um, however, this isn't probably the best application uh, for the following reasons. When you're fighting a fish, this line is attached to the, your rod, and as you're reeling that fish in, this will continue to want to dive on you. So you're kind of fighting the resistance of your diver as you're trying to reel in your fish. So a tool that's perhaps better suited for this application is the Dipsy Diver. The reason being, you tie your line coming from your rod into this Dipsy Diver here in the front, and when you hook into a fish with enough tension, you can trip the mechanism to where that diver will come up with the fish, and you don't have to fight the diver as you reel the fish in. So a little less resistance, you get to feel more of the fight, and I'll show you how to rig up one of these Dipsy Divers next. These are a great tool. So the first step in setting up your Dipsy Diver is you'll notice that you have a swivel here on this part of the Dipsy Diver. We're gonna attach the line coming from our fishing rod into this swivel. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so all I've done is I've attached my line coming from the fishing rod into this swivel on the front of the Dipsy Diver. Next, I'm going to tie a four foot piece of monofilament into the back of the Dipsy Diver and attach one end of that four foot monofilament to this swivel and the other end to my dodger. Okay, so I've attached a four foot piece of monofilament to the back end of the Dipsy Diver here and the other end of that four foot piece of monofilament is tied into the front of my dodger. And then obviously behind my dodger, I've got my leader length and my lure of choice. So let's see how that would work. You're trolling along, this diver is taking your, your line down to your desired depth, and then let's say you hook into a fish. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna set the hook and I'm gonna give this a tug here, and you'll notice that this has a trip mechanism right there. When that trips, the diver then changes direction and you can reel this diver up to the boat without that diver wanting to plane 
and fight the water. So really you're just fighting the fish as you reel this diver up to the boat. Now the cool thing about this is you'll notice that this diver has a screw right here. So you can adjust the tension required to trip that mechanism. So you can tailor it to really heavy fish or if you've got a lighter fish that you're fighting, you can just simply set the tension of that screw and that will make the tension either greater or less for tripping that arm. The other thing that's really nice about a dipsy diver is these have a directional component to them. So what you can do is, if you're fishing multiple lines out of the back of the boat, which most of us are, you can change whether you want this to go out the left or the right side of the boat by turning this dial. So this is really nice. Again, you're not getting tangled up with your other lines. It has an indexing arrow right here. So you can take this extremely to the left or as far out of the left side of the back of the boat as you want. You have a neutral position here where you can keep it directly behind the boat or straight out the back. And then you can change that to go all the way out the right side of the boat and stay away from your lines that way. So these dipsy divers are kind of a good tool. And um, this is a little bit big. This is a large size. It's gonna get you down probably close to that 50 foot mark, but they do make different sizes of these as well. And I recommend both the jet diver and the dipsy diver for those of us who are trying to fish or troll for trout or kokanee salmon and we don't have the utility of a downrigger. These are a great tool for us poor fishermen. One last thing that's really important to mention is that kokanee salmon are known to have a really soft mouth, which means with too much tension on the line, you're going to pull the hook right out of their mouth. And this is the reason why a lot of you have fish getting off really close to the boat or during periods of the fight where there's a lot of tension on the line. So, one way we combat that is the use of what's called a rubber snubber. On the back side of this dipsy diver, instead of tying our line into this swivel, now we have clipped a rubber snubber into that spot, and that rubber snubber acts to absorb a lot of the tension so that that fish has a less of a chance of getting off during those periods of the fight when the tension is the greatest. And then we tie the line that's going to our dodger on the back side of the rubber snubber. And that's a good idea to use a rubber snubber with a dipsy diver and also probably with a jet diver as well. Hopefully this video was informational and helpful. If you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, post them in the comments below and hopefully these tactics help you catch a few more kokanee.